right, so I'm gonna introduce this video really quick. So this is a video where I talk about the second arrow in the human design chart. It's the located in the bottom left hand side of the um, human design body graph chart and this arrow can be pointed either left or right and depending on which direction it is pointed, it tells us something uh, about us. Um, so in this video, I will have a general overview of the human design arrows, why I'm using that as a framework for this conversation around productivity, and then I'll do a little bit of a deep dive into the second arrow and what it might tell us about um, how we might get into flow. So this is not intended to be prescriptive about your chart. You know, if your arrow points a specific direction, it's not intended to be prescriptive, but it's more to open the conversation around does more structure feel good to you in your life and open up flow and make you more productive or does more fluidity feel supportive to you? So that's the kind of conversation that I'm trying to have here. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. All right, so I wanna introduce the four arrows in human design. And I want to share a little bit of why I'm using that as a framework for a larger conversation around productivity. So if you think human design is a bit woo and it's a little crazy and you're like, I'm not sure about this, I still invite you to stick around because really the conversation is less about the arrows and it's more about is more structure or more fluidity supportive to you in your life to be and feel more in flow and more productive, okay? So let me just get into the arrows really quick. If you pull your body graph chart or you look at one online, you're gonna see that there's four arrows at the top of the body graph chart. Those arrows can point either left or right, each one. And whether it's pointed left or right means something different. So they, in human design, they represent what's called the four transformations. The first transformation is digestion. The second is environment. The third is perspective, and this, the last one is awareness. So the arrows in a nutshell tell us how we relate to the world around us and how we're designed to take in information. And I believe that even talking about the arrows in a very simple way can give us insight on how we might be more productive. So my first point, this conversation is the tip of the iceberg. A human design body graph chart is so complex. There's so much information in it. So just know, like if you're even thinking about the four arrows, there's 16 possible different combinations um, that somebody can have. And so if you think about it, if you think there's like rubber bands attached to each arrow, they kind of have this push and a pull amongst each other, depending if they're left or they're right. So I really recommend that if you really wanna understand at a deep level what your arrows mean for you, have a conversation with your favorite human design expert, okay? Because they're gonna be the ones who really tell you what it means for you. I'm going to be very reductive and simplistic when I'm talking about the arrows in relation to productivity. So I don't want any of my human design peers to get upset with me. So just be really aware that this is a very simple conversation. There's a lot of complexity. So you'd really wanna talk to an expert if you wanna understand what your dynamic looks like and what it means for you. All right, so my second point that I need to uh, really hammer in here is experts in human design tell us that we should really not worry about the advanced information in the arrows of our chart until after we have mastered our energy type. So specifically our strategy and our authority for our energy type. So if you are new to human design, I highly recommend go get your chart put in your information, see what your energy type is. You'll be one of five different energy types and really kind of understand what your strategy and authority is and start learning to master that before worrying too much about the details of all the other things in your chart. Um, all that said, I'm being called to speak to the more advanced information in the arrows in a very simplistic way, just to kind of have this conversation around productivity. Um, so just keep that in mind. The last thing I wanna say is again, like my disclaimer, is no tool, or personality typing, whether it's human design, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, like name it, whatever colors, 
like should define us. Okay. It sh we should never be felt feeling like we're put into a box. So in every video that I do on this, I recommend you lean into your own tuition and what feels right for you versus what some, you know, report tells you about yourself. So I just really want to make that really clear. Okay. So I'm going to get into the arrows now and um, thanks for listening. Okay. Let's talk about arrow number two. So arrow number two is located on the bottom left-hand side of the body graph chart. Generally speaking, this arrow tells us something about our physical body in environment. So I'm talking not just physical envir environment, but I'm also talking virtual. And if your arrow points left, what it might mean for you is that you thrive in a more structured, consistent environment. This person likely feels more grounded and is able to focus or concentrate when they're in a familiar environment. If your arrow points right, what it might mean for you is that you learn from seeing a bunch of different environments in action. So mutable environment, changing location throughout the day might be beneficial for you. All right, so let's just like take the human design part and just, just set it aside. And let's just say you're feeling unproductive or not in flow. You think you can make some changes. Let's just think about environment in terms of structure or fluidity. So if you wanna test out and see if more structure would feel supportive to you and help open up flow, think about having a, you know, a routine in the sense of, I go to the same desk every single day to do my work or to study. I eat at the same place every single day. Think about maybe when you travel, you know, yes, go to new places, but you know, if more structure feels good to you, it feels more supportive, you might find that returning to the same familiar places periodically feels supportive to you. If you want to try on fluidity and say, gosh, I feel like, you know, going to sit at the same desk every single day or whatever feels restrictive or boring or whatever, you might try on some fluidity. So what that would look like for you is you have a maybe you don't have a dedicated workspace, especially if your company is set up for more mobility, you know, changing locations throughout the day. If you work at home, work in your office for a little bit, go outside for a little bit, go to the couch for a little bit. Um, changing your environment throughout the day might feel a little more supportive to you because you're going to be, um, you're just going to be engaging your brain differently in each of those environments. The other thing is, is um, from a fluidity perspective and thinking about travel, you know, going to new locations often is, is going to be um, probably feel a little more supportive to you than um, going to the same places every time. So just food for thought. Give it a try if you're feeling like not in flow. Would more structure feel supportive? Does it help you concentrate or feel more in flow? Would more fluidity, freedom, mutability in your environment make you feel more in flow and move the needle on the projects that are important to you?